good afternoon. Good to be with you again this Wednesday afternoon. We are speaking of faith as we have been for the past two and a half months, living by faith. The just shall live by his faith. The title of the message this afternoon would be Two by Two Faith. It comes from 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses 6 through verse number 15. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. Then Jonathan said, Very well, let us cross over to these men, and we will show ourselves to them. If they say thus to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say thus, Come up to us, then we will go up to them. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this will be a sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, Look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, and we will show you something. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him, and they fell before him. And as he came after him, his armor bearer killed them. That first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within about half an acre of land. There was trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The garrison and the raiders also trembled, and the earth quaked so that it was a very great trembling. The Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. For everybody that comes to him must believe that he is. I say that verse every week. But it is very important that we believe the word and also that we believe what the verse is and believe that God does exist and that God doesn't lie. He is not a man that he should lie. Whenever he says that if we will seek him, we will find him. If we do seek him, we will find him. Saul, King Saul, had just had a faith failure. 1 Samuel chapter number 13 tells the story of King Saul after his second year of being king. They had already had one victory behind them. It was a tremendous victory. But at the day that Samuel anointed him to be king, Samuel told him, one day the Philistines are going to come against you and you are to go to Gilgal. And while you are at Gilgal, you are to wait seven days. Wait until I come to you. And when I come, I will offer sacrifices. So the war had started. The Philistines had come to Gilgal and Saul and his army was at Gilgal. And the Philistines were greatly outnumbering the nation of Israel. They had chariots, which comparable to us today would be tanks. And the children of Israel were just walking on their feet. In fact, the Bible tells us in the story that in all the land of Israel, there was only two swords. Jonathan had one and Saul had one. Everybody else had clubs or sticks or some kind of instrument that they used for farming to fight against the Philistines. And so they were greatly afraid. And as they were waiting for the seven days to come and waiting for Samuel to come, seven days got there. And it says right at the end of the seven, everybody was running away from Saul. And so he offered the sacrifice. And no sooner had he offered the sacrifice, Samuel showed up and said, what have you done? And he told him that he had sacrificed. And Samuel told him this was a test of faith. If he had passed the test and had waited for him and not let fear overcome him, God would have established his kingdom forever. His son would have been king after him and his son, grandson, and great-grandson, and it would have continued. We don't want a faith failure. God picks us up after we have failures. And so verse 1 tells us this about 
uh, Jonathan and his armor bearer. He said, let's go over to the garrison of the Philistines. They are watching there. Everybody is deserting. Things are getting worse and worse. Samuel has left. And Jonathan, his heart is touched. And he shows his faith. He says, let's go over to the Philistines. But it says he did not tell his father what he was planning to do. His father had already had a faith failure. And Jonathan did not need anybody to discourage him. He didn't need anybody else around in that multitude of people that was on Saul's army to discourage him. The Bible says this, the eyes of the Lord go back and forth throughout the earth. He wants to show himself strong in behalf of everybody who will trust in him, whose hearts are fully committed to him. I believe that Jonathan received some divine inspiration, an impulse of the Holy Spirit said, trust me. Trust me, and this voice was coming from God. And so he begins to make this daring speech to his servant, and his servant agrees with him that is what he should do. God does take us on daring adventures in this life, and people will call us foolish if they knew what God was calling us to do. And sometimes when we tell our vision, they say you're foolish. But Jonathan took the daring adventure he was trying to exercise his faith. And so we know that God has taken Abraham on a daring adventure. He took Gideon and he took Moses. But Jonathan knew that not anything was impossible with God. And he made the confession with his lips, saying to his armor bearer, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. In his history, in his history, there is the story of Gideon with 300 men defeating an army of 135,000 men. But that's not the only thing in his history. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is touching his heart and he wants to believe God for great things. He wants to go on this adventure. It's not about him. It's about God and it's about Israel. I'm sure that he knew about the history of Abraham and Sarah. I believe he knew the story of God taking the form of a man and coming to Abraham's house. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, when God is in the form of a man and he's at Abraham's house or tent and he's had a meal, the Lord asked Abraham, he says, where is Sarah? And he says, she's in the tent behind me. And so the Lord speaks this word. He knew that it would get Sarah's attention. He says, next year about this time, I'm going to give Sarah a child. And Sarah laughs. She's in the tent. She doesn't do it out loud. She does it in her heart. And then the Lord speaks up and he says, why did Sarah laugh? And Sarah speaks up within the tent. She said, I didn't laugh. Genesis 18, 14 is God's response to Sarah's laugh. He said to her, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And so I know that Jonathan had a seed of faith, and God is building these stories into his life, and he said, Trust me, trust me. Jesus Christ is still doing the same thing today to me and to you, saying, Trust me. He giveth us inspiration by the Holy Spirit. I believe that what Jonathan did on this day greatly influenced King Asa generations later, about 110 years later. A big army, two to one odds, were against the nation of Judah. Second Chronicles 14, verse number 11, Asa makes just about the same prayer to God. Asa cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you. And in your name we go against this multitude, O Lord. You are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. This is for the Lord's glory. Jonathan knew that. It wasn't about making a name for Jonathan. It was for God's glory and it was for the nation of Israel. The sign. 1 Samuel 14, verses 9 through 12. Let me read that again. He said, If they say to us, 
Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up. But if they say thus, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this will be a sign to us. So the both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, Look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, we will show you something. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. Jonathan says it may be that the Lord will work for us. And we can hear the arrogance in the mouth of the Philistines. They're standing up on the hill. They, own, they have the high ground. They say, come up to us. We'll show you something. It is such arrogance that's in their life. And Jonathan said, this will be a sign for us. Jonathan is walking in humility. He says, the Lord is our help. And they're bragging about their power and their ability. Psalms 37, verse number 11. David says this, But the meek will inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount tells us, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Those that are totally trusting in God. Solomon tells us in Proverbs, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. That means ask Him what we should do. Tell Him that we are trusting in Him. Tell Him that we are dependent upon Him. Tell Him that we have no might, no ability without Him. Proverbs 16, verse number 18. This verse speaks to everybody that's proud. Even Christians can get proud. We can have success with God. God answer prayer, and then pretty soon we feel like we're doing it on our own but our help comes from the Lord. This was the problem with the Philistines. They had pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Listen to the words of the Philistines. Come up here. We'll show you something. Such arrogance. Let us walk in humility in our life. Let's look at the victory. As I read the next three verses, Notice the apparent disadvantage of Jonathan and his servant. 1 Samuel 14, verses 13 through 15. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands went and knees with his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan. As he came after him, his armor bearer killed them. That first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within the half acre of land. There was a great trembling in the camp, in the field and among all the people. The garrison and the raiders also trembled, and the earth quaked so that there was a very great trembling. The picture paints it as going up a hill. The Philistines had the high ground, and it seems to be a steep hill. Jonathan is climbing on his hands and knees. Remember, only two swords. Saul has one. Jonathan has one. And they're climbing up, and the guy behind him, behind Jonathan, his armor bearer, just got a club. But I believe by the time they killed the first Philistine, I believe that the armor bearer got him a sword, took the weapon out of the other man's hand. And so we have God on our side, and they are trusting in their self. Two of us trusting in God has the advantage over thousands that are trusting in themselves. There are thousands of Philistines and they're all spread out over the mountainside and going up the hill in the space of about a half an acre, they kill 20 men. Also, God begins to shake the earth. This is a real shaking, like an earthquake, and it begins to put fear into the heart. Jonathan and the nation of Israel that's beginning to sense the quaking, they have seen stories or heard stories how God used earthquakes to bring fear into the enemy. Let me read Psalms 44, verse number three. This is from the New American Standard Bible. It says, for by their own sword, they did not possess the land and their own arm did not save them, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your presence for you favored them. That's something when we got God's favor 
on our life. At the beginning of this, Jonathan, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, let us go over to the land of these uncircumcised Philistines. Uncircumcised stands for people that are out of covenant with God. Jonathan is in covenant with God. And he says, the Lord favored them. That's what the psalmist says in Psalms 44, verse number three. I want God's favor. The odds may be against me, but I want God's favor. Deuteronomy 32, verse number 30. How could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them? Jonathan probably knew that verse. Don't know what he knew, but he knew that God was all powerful. Nothing could limit God. Victory for the two of them turned out to be a victory for the whole nation. The land began to quake. Even down where Saul was, the land began to quake. There was lots of shouts coming from the Philistines. And Saul began to inquire who was missing. When he found out that it was Jonathan, then the war broke out. But the victory for two turned out to be a victory for the entire nation. One more verse of scripture from Matthew chapter 18, verse number 19. Again, I say to you, this is what Jesus is saying. Again, I say to you that if two of you on earth agree concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Faith, single faith is great, but when we pray at times, we need to join with others. Faith, two by two. When Jesus sent the 12 disciples out, he sent them out two by two. Later on, he sent 70 out and he sent them two by two. We never see Paul, the apostle, ministering, the great apostle that he was, by himself. He had others that went with him. Oftentimes, he had two or three that went with him. And so we find that faith connected with other people's faith. Let us agree together and believe that through this COVID experience, God is going to keep us healthy. If any gets sick, God will heal us. But it's just not about the COVID. It's about an awakening taking place in America. It's about an awakening taking place in Ivan Assembly of God. It's about an awakening taking place in our individual hearts. Pastor Dan desires to see the glory of God manifest in his life, revealed, but also in your life. Can we pray? Father, circumstances do not limit you. We have much ministry doing now by YouTube. We have a lot of things going on in this world, but circumstances does not intimidate you. We are asking you, Jesus, in spite of everything that's going on, I want our faith to rise. May we be connected with one another, with prayer, by faith, by texting, also by coming to church and encouraging one another. We know the power of agreement if we too will agree and so I ask right now, Father, that everyone that's praying with me will agree that we are seeking for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your church. A church that is full of the Holy Spirit with miracles and signs and demonstrations. Let us agree together about praying for the lost, that the Holy Spirit will convict and they will say yes. So right now, Father, we agree together as we pray for the lost that the power of the Holy Spirit will convict them of sin, not only convict them of sin, but your spirit will magnify you, Jesus, into their life. We also agree together that the power of the Holy Spirit will strengthen us, that we will, we will be as bold and courageous as what Jonathan was. We will step out on faith, believing that you will act for us just as you acted for Jonathan and his armor bearer. And the victory for Jonathan and his armor bearer turned out to be a victory for the whole nation. The victory that you do for us will be for the whole church. We ask these things in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The power of agreement, two by two. Let us believe that we can move mountains. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Let's believe that. May God bless you.